Arab billionaires and their royal lifestyles. Talking about the rich people and their lifestyle is a totally interesting topic, and it makes you hold on to see what all these rich people's lives look like, and what kind of assets they own, right? Even telling you itself is so exciting. So, we'll say welcome back to Money Tree, where in today's video, we'll talk all about the Arab billionaires and how lavishly they live. So without taking any more of your time, let's get right into the video. And please make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos. And let's begin! The world's wealthiest people have had a difficult year, with the number of global billionaires decreasing to 2,668, down from 2,755 in 2021. This year, 329 people were removed from the list, while 236 newcomers were added. The world's billionaire's total net worth in 2022 is $12.7 trillion, down from $13.1 trillion in 2021. In the Middle East, the list of the richest Arabs in 2022 is substantially unchanged from that of 2021, except Majid al Futaim, who died in December of 2021. For the seventh year in a row, Saudi millionaires were excluded from Forbes World's Billionaires list in 2022. The first man on our list is Nasef Sawiris. Nasef Sawiris joined the Oriscom Group as soon as he graduated from high school in 1982. Since then, he has climbed many company ladders and held various roles. Nasef Sawiris is an energetic and clever businessman. He has stakes in a variety of industries. He has amassed considerable money through his many investing, entrepreneurial, and management capacities at Oriscom Construction Industries. According to Forbes, Nasef Sawiris has the following company portfolios and investments. He's the CEO of Oriscom Construction Industries, a global nitrogen fertilizer manufacturer with factories in Texas and Iowa that trades on the Euronext Amsterdam platform. He owns roughly 6% of sportswear manufacturer Adidas, which is considered his most valuable asset. In December 2020, he purchased a 5% ownership in Madison Square Garden Sports, the owner of the NBA's New York Knicks and NHL's New York Rangers franchises. In addition to being the CEO of Oriscom Construction, an engineering and construction corporation that's listed on the Cairo market in the NASDAQ Dubai. He's also a member of the NASDAQ Dubai Board of Directors. Nasef Sawiris is also a director of the Dubai International Financial Exchange. His interests include investments in cement firm Lafarge Holcomb and Adidas, which he oversees. He is Aston Villa's executive chairman. He is the chairman and CEO of Avanti Acquisition Corporation, a special acquisition firm formed to merge and acquire existing businesses and adopt their business concepts. Nasef Sawiris is other affiliations. He is a member of the University of Chicago's Board of Trustees since 2013, a member of the Global Board of Advisors of the Council on Foreign Relations, or CFR, and he's a member of the Cleveland Clinic's International Leadership Board. Sawiris is married to Shireen, and the couple has four children. Nasef Sawiris is a Coptic Christian as well. The actual number of residences owned by Nasef Sawiris is unknown. He does, however, live in London and has a property in New York City. It is widely reported that he has a multi-million dollar home in London and in Egypt and New York. Nasef Sawiris owns 965th Avenue, one of New York City's most costly buildings. The penthouse residence costs Sawiris $70 million. Nasef Sawiris is a busy individual who requires superior vehicles to satisfy his executive demands. Nasef, being a millionaire, can afford near every costly automobile ever made. He has a 2019 Audi Q5 as well as a private boat and jet. The 2019 Audi Q5 blends sporty performance with a high-end interior that includes a contemporary, user-friendly infotainment system and spacious, well-padded seats. The model is a tiny luxury car with powerful engines, all-wheel drive, a smooth ride, and precise handling. The 2019 Audi Q5 is priced between $37,069 and $52,672. The wealthy businessman has a multi-million dollar private boat. The boat's outfitted with cutting-edge technology. When duty calls, Calls and asks if Sawiris has to go quickly, he doesn't have to worry since his private plane's always ready. According to common belief, the affluent know how to grow richer. Nasef Sawiris' wealth continues to rise as he pursues new ways to increase his riches. Maybe he'll be wealthier than Dangoti eventually. The second one on our list is Isad Rebrab and family. Isad Rebrab is the founder and CEO of Sivital, Algeria's largest privately held corporation, and he has a net worth of $5.1 billion. Sivital has one of the world's largest sugar refineries with a capacity of 2 million tons per year. Sivital owns many European enterprises, including Group Brandt, a French home appliance manufacturer, an Italian steel mill, and a German water purification company. Rebrab was freed on January 1, 2020, after serving eight months in prison on corruption allegations. He claims he did nothing wrong. 
Our next rich Arab is Naguib Sariris. The Egyptian millionaire serves as a chairman and CEO of Oriscom Investing Holding SAE, which has its headquarters in Egypt. The firm began operations in 1977 as an IT and telecom leader. Following a rebranding, the company recently expanded its operations to several other economic areas, including construction, mobile communications, media, and technology. At the same time, it spread beyond Egypt to North Korea, Pakistan, Lebanon, and other North African and Middle Eastern countries. Sawiris was named the eighth richest person in Africa by four Forbes magazine in 2021 with a personal fortune of $3.1 billion. According to CEO World Magazine, Naguib Sawiris, the oldest of three billionaire brothers, is the 16th richest person in the Middle East in 2021. Naguib's been a Mykonos fan in recent years. He purchased two residences on the island four years ago and just constructed another on a site he purchased near Kalo Livadi, where he's planning a significant investment. On the hill opposite Solimar, he is constructing a magnificent five-star hotel that, according to Greek media, will be finished in two years. It's estimated to cost more than 9 million euros. Mykonos is a popular destination for international investors who spend enormous sums of money to build homes and acquire property holdings. More precisely, the Sawiris Group will construct 27 luxury villas for very wealthy tourists who will have the rare opportunity to enjoy spectacular views of one of Mykonos' most gorgeous beaches. The building process has begun, and the new hotel is projected to be finished by 2023 when it will begin operations and provide the best quality of service to its visitors. This is the Egyptian tycoon's first substantial investment on the island. In May 2011, he created a significant impression on the island by arranging an event at Namos that sparked days of debate. A spectacular night with French rosé wines, sushi, fresh seafood, and champagne was enjoyed by many Naguib Sawiris friends. Six years later, his name was once again in the news as the purchase of the Via Coronia and Agios Lazaros, according to rumors. He has claimed to have paid around 5 million euros for this house. In addition, he's claimed to purchase an even more spectacular mansion on the island, which belonged to a well-known businessman and was worth more than 6.5 million euros. The last on our list we have Najib Mikadi. M1 Group, an investment company with its headquarters in Beirut, was co-founded by Najib Mikadi and his wealthy brother Taha. Among its holdings are assets in the South African telecom company MTN, the fashion store Pepe Jeans, and real estate in New York City, London, and Monaco. During the height of the civil conflict in Lebanon in 1982, Mikadi and his brother started Investcom to sell satellite phones. They expanded their operations into other nations in Africa, including Ghana, Liberia, and Benin, where they constructed cell phone towers. Investcom went public on the London Stock Exchange in 2005, and by 2009... The South African telecommunications company MTN paid $3.6 billion to inquire the Makati's interest in the company. Hey, that'll do it for today's video. If you'd like a second part for this video, please let us know in the comment section down below. Until then, please give our video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe for more. Thanks for watching today's video, and we'll see you in the next one.